Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Joshua Rich. I'm the president and the founder of uh, Bullseye Locations. And I'm very excited about uh, talking to you today and, <clears throat> and doing uh, a webinar. And uh, it's been a little bit uh, of time since we did our last webinar. Uh, but uh, the recent release of uh, uh, support for GA4 uh, that, that we completed uh, in the last uh, few weeks, I think was uh, a really good reason for us to uh, kind of open up the doors and uh, <clears throat> talk to people, make sure that they understood the implementation um, and how to use it. We're really excited about it. Um, I'll start with just a couple introductions. Um, joining me uh, today on, on my panel um, are uh, Ben Bonk, who is uh, the VP of uh, Account Services. And his, his role is largely working with uh, clients uh, doing implementations um, for those clients who are uh, using the Connect subscription and local pages. Um, he is the, the, the guy who runs the team that you know, works with you on, on the SEO and is the one who um, you know, has the, the greatest perspective, at least, on using reports and how to use reports. So he's gonna talk a little bit to that um, when we get there. Um, Alejandro uh, Sharon. Chahon, Chahon, <laughs> um, who is uh, uh, the senior developer and technical lead. Um, he, his team is the team that actually implemented uh, uh, this implementation uh, for GA4. Um, he's done a phenomenal job uh, um, that I think you'll see, um, and he can certainly be there to answer any of the deeper technical questions that I can't answer. And then of course, there's uh, Tom Flynn, who many of you know, uh, senior account manager, uh, been with the company for many, many years. Um, and uh, he's sort of the, the main point person um, um, when it comes to uh, accounts and sales and so forth. So any questions you have, feel free to direct it to, to him. The agenda that we have uh, for today <laughs> is uh, I want to start just talking a, a little bit uh, sort of foundational about the difference between uh, uh, Universal Analytics um, and GA4 um, to set the stage. Um, talk to how Bullseye actually tracks data in GA4, which I think is important to sort of understand the architecture and fundamentals behind it. Um, and then uh, the, the sort of bulk of this webinar is gonna be about setting up uh, GA4 uh, tracking to make sure that uh, everybody knows how to do it. We have had you know, a lot of questions over the last few weeks um, this is, uh, our, you know, an opportunity to make sure that everybody, you know, knows exactly what to do. It's a, uh, I'd say that it's not a complicated process, but it's a, it's a tricky process. Um, got to get everything right. Uh, got to cross your T's and dot your I's kind of thing. Um, so I'll walk you through that, that whole process. Um, then we'll talk a little bit about how the data comes into uh, GA, GA4 um, and some of the sort of very simple things that you can start to do. Um, with the data and how to how to use uh, dimensions, um, how to see the events, all that kind of stuff we'll talk to. Um, and then uh, then we'll we'll actually then turn our attention to talking about tag manager uh, because we do have a, a tag manager support. so you can use uh, GA4 sort of in its native uh, integration or if you're using tag manager, um, I'll show you how to set that up and what are some of the subtle uh, differences. Um, any, if, if you have any questions <clears throat> during the webinar, you're welcome to put them in the chat. Um, if they can be answered while I'm speaking, uh, Tom and the panelists can do that. Um, and, uh, and if not, then we'll take a, a pause here and there and I can answer any questions, but feel free to, um, feel free to submit questions as we go along. All right, so talking uh, sort of the background a little bit about uh, GA4 and, uh, and and what the big change was. And as, as we all know, last summer, you know, Google switching from uh, Universal Analytics to GA4, deprecating Universal An Analytics was a, a big event, required a lot of people to do a lot of work, make a lot of changes. Um, and as we've begun, begun to work with it, it's, it's become clearer sort of what, what was the basis for all those those changes and why such a 
you know, such should, such a, a wide change was required to support it. Um, one point is that that you know they were looking at the, the future and the environment had changed a lot. Um, users were um, accessing uh, companies, brands via multiple platforms. They're accessing it not just through the website, but through mobile devices, mobile apps. And so they wanted to, to evolve the tool to be able to track all that data across devices. Um, and so that forced them to change a, a lot of the, uh, the architecture behind um, the analytics. Uh, they also looked at all the privacy regulations that you know have continued to become more uh, restrictive, um, you know, GDPR requiring uh, data uh, protection, you know, not being able to store private uh, data, um, and having regulations around that. And so they they thought about how to introduce more anonymity in order to address some of those, those concerns. They also wanted to open up uh, reporting and offer uh, a lot more flexibility. So that required collecting more data um, sort of at a, a lateral level instead of at a uh, at a vertical level. Um, and then the last point is they looked at, you know, everything's going on with machine learning, predictive analytics, and even now um, artificial intelligence, um, and wanted to start to, to work toward uh, a platform that could provide that kind of, uh, that kind of uh, an analyzation um, and, and prediction and be able to use that as a tool for driving business decisions. <clears throat> Some of the key specific differences um, are that uh, uh, GA3 um, was a session-based model. If, if you recall, you know, you track a user session, uh, you'd have a visitor session, the length of time that they, they stayed on the, uh, on the page, um, and they've moved that to an event-based model um, where everything is defined by particular events, and then you're setting uh, different parameters or dimensions about those events, um, which again is 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 supporting this idea of being able to collect data across multiple uh, platforms. Um, they expanded the amount of data that that uh, you could uh, collect uh, from 10 million hits per month to unlimited. Uh, they added some additional uh, dimensionalization capabilities. Um, so instead of 20 dimensions and properties, you now have 50 dimensions. Um, for every event uh, per property uh, or 50 dimensions and events per property. Um, they moved uh, from the, this idea of, of views where you could create views um, and got rid of uh, views. And, um, and, and I think by and large that was because they, uh, they changed the way that uh, you could dimensionalize the data and you didn't necessarily need views to, to have uh, subsets of the data. Uh, big change was moving from uh, cookie-based measurements to cookie-less. Um, obviously, uh, we all know these days, uh, there's a lot of uh, stigma around cookies and nobody wants cookie collection because of privacy concerns. And so they migrated off of that, uh, off of a cookie-based measurement system. Um, the old uh, universal analytics had very little in the way of machine learning predictive capabilities. Um, they've they started to add advanced uh, learning and predictive cap capabilities. Uh, data retention has uh, has actually gone down. Um, I think probably that is due to um, the the fact that they're collecting more data, and so they're able to to keep that for um, or they're not able to keep that for as long period of time. And then the last thing is, is uh, in the old uh, analytics, you would see on an event by event basis, there was sort of a fixed set of uh, parameters. Whereas now as you create um, custom events, you have the ability to add uh, custom parameters. Um, and those really can be unlimited and gives you the ability to define what your own dimensions are ahead of time. And as the data is ca captured, be able to um, be able to push that into analytics for reporting purposes. Uh, just a, a sort of quick visual on the difference in terms of how the data is getting collected. This is sort of obviously at the code level. Um, the old uh, universal analytics, you know, you had an event that happened, you had, uh, you know, the ability to categorize it, you had the ability to define the action, and you had the ability to define the, the label. Um, and so it was 
much more restrictive. The, the new approach allows you to set that event. Um, and then you can see video type, campaign name, event details, um, and action are all parameters that can be set at, at the code level. And, and Google Analytics can automatically read those in and make those part of the data that's available to you. All right, so <clears throat> before we uh, sort of go through the workshop of actually setting up uh, uh, Tag Manager to collect data on a, uh, on a site, I wanna talk a little bit about just the architecture of the page. So the, the bullseye search interface is delivered uh, as an iframe. Um, there's, a, there's a published code uh, that, that is part of what you get when you, um, when you complete the configuration of an interface. And that published code will actually contain two elements, which you can see here. Um, you can see the iframe JavaScript, um, which will be at the top of the published code. And then you've got the iframe. When you take that code and you embed it into uh, your, your page, um, at the top of the page will be the, the Google Analytics tag. So if you've already set up um, Google Analytics, uh, you've got a stream of data coming from uh, your website, you will have this, this page will automatically uh, be there. Um, and if you don't, of course, you've got to add that, that tag. So, so what happens is there's, there's essentially, every time an event gets, uh, gets triggered, gets fired in, uh, in the uh, bullseye search result, it could be click on phone, it could be click on email, whatever that event is, it actually passes it into the iframe code that's part of the bullseye embed. And then there's a, a handshake that happens between that and the tag that is on the page that's hosting the iframe. Um, and then that data gets passed into uh, GA for, for reporting purposes. Um, <clears throat> so the point here is that, that there are a couple components that are necessary. There's the uh, G tag on the host page. There's the iframe JavaScript that is part of the embed code. And of course the, the iframe. Um, the way that, that Alejandro and his team have architected this um, allows us to, um, in the future, be able to add new events and new new parameters. Um, and as we do do that, they can be automatically passed in um, to the uh, to the tag, and you can start collecting that that data. Um, so it gives us a lot of flexibility. It future proofs what we're doing. Um, and I think is a, a, a really elegant uh, way for uh, us to, to combine um, an iframe with a, a hosted, hosted page. <clears throat> All right, so we are tracking 23 events um, in, our, in our knowledge base. Um, you can actually see um, these uh, 23 events. Um, so, uh, the contact link, uh, map pin, et cetera. Um, there's a description of what those events are. And then there's also a list of all the parameters uh, that are passed for each of these, these events. Um, so you can always get that at, our, at the knowledge base. Um, these are all custom events. <clears throat> and as I mentioned earlier, they're gonna show up automatically in your GA4 properties, assuming uh, they're configured correctly. Um, we can also support the tag manager. Um, so you can work directly uh, with the GA4, which I'm gonna walk you through the setup of that, um, or you can use tag manager. Um, tag manager requires slightly different uh, configuration, but we do have a template that you can use actually with all the events tagged and organized, and you can just import that into your tag manager. Um, and so you don't have to go through the the building probably you don't have to build your own tags. We're providing that as a template. Um, okay, so um, the the uh, the steps, high level steps are: you go to Google Analytics, uh, you uh, confirm that there's a data stream running, and you get the uh, G code. Uh, you add that code onto your host, the host page, the page that is hosting the iframe. Um, you're going to also then take that code, enter it into the bullseye interface configuration. Um, you'll generate the embed code, um, and then you'll put that embed code on the page. Assuming you've done that all correctly, it, it should be working, um, and you'll be able to verify data collection 
in a couple ways. You can see it actually in the uh, developer console. I'll, I'll show you how to do that. Um, you can see it in the Google uh, Analytics real-time reports. Um, and, and if you've set it up, you can also see it in Google Analytics debug mode. Um, so, so you want to verify that the data is coming through, that you're seeing data, and then if there are problems, uh, there are some troubleshooting steps that uh, that we can sort of outline that you would take. So let's uh, take this step by step. <clears throat> um, step one: confirming the data stream and get the getting the Google Analytics code. So, from your Google Analytics account, you can go into the admin section. <clears throat> um, and you have uh, uh, data collection and modification. You click on data streams. Um, now you can have multiple data streams. You could configure different data streams from different applications. Um, this really kind of gets into uh, the organization and architecture of Google, Google Analytics 4. But assuming that there's a, uh, a data stream, um, you can actually go in and click on that and you can see the, the measurement ID that, that you need. Um, and you have the ability to view the tag instructions. So uh, so again, we're gonna uh, confirm the data stream and we're gonna get the, uh, the code. So I'm gonna go grab the, uh, go. Um, I'm gonna go grab this code. I'm going to open up my home page and just make sure that I'm logged in correctly. I'm going to open up my uh, page and I'm going to insert uh, that Google Analytics code, um, paste it uh, in every code of the page immediately after the head element and don't add more, add more than one. So immediately after the head, we're going to go in and we're going to drop in the Google uh, Tag Manager. Notice that you can see uh, that uh, <clears throat> we've got the the G code, uh, which would correspond with the code that you see um, on the the Google Tag. So once once we've done that, we're going to save this. Um, and there's a there's a tool for testing it. We're just going to test this and it verifies that it can find that tag on the, the page. So that's great. Uh, step one is, is, uh, is complete. So step two is now we're gonna uh, add gtag on the post page. Actually, we did step two. Um, so we're on to step three, which is entering the code in the bullseye interface configure, configuration. So from your bullseye account, you're gonna go to uh, the interface, uh, listing tab, you're going to find the interface that you are working on, which here is the ABC uh, map on the side. Actually, before we do this, I'm going to pull up the, the actual page itself. So I've configured a demo website at bullseye-host.com. Right now, if I reload this page, um, you don't see the uh, the, the search interface um, because we have not embedded it yet. Um, if I view the source code here, um, you will actually see the uh, the Google tag that we added to that page. But um, the other thing I want to show you is that right now on the publish tab, In the embed code down at the bottom, that is what you use to embed the locator. Notice that uh, we have, it starts with the, uh, the script. Um, you've got the iframe. And if we were to just insert this page uh, or in, embed this code, you would get the locator, um, but you wouldn't have the uh, the analytics uh, script that I pointed out because it's, it's not there. And the reason I wanna show you that is I wanna show you what it looks like once we've added that uh, script or added that that tag and the script uh, is automatically added. So what you need to do is you need to uh, configure uh, the Google Analytics tracking ID and the host URL. So the host URL uh, was previously entered 
you can see that it's the same URL that of the demo page. We're going to go into um, this um, stream. We're going to get the, the G uh, tag, the measurement ID. We're going to copy that into the Google tracking ID here. Um, and we're going to save this. <clears throat> We're going to go to the Publish tab. And you can see now that in addition to uh, the iframe script, um, which sort of begins here, we have an additional script, uh, which includes the, the G tag. And it's probably very hard to see. I can make my screen a little larger, I think. There we go. Um, so you can see that G tag and this additional script has been, been added. <clears throat> so uh, let's save this again. Oops. All right, um, so we go back here. So um, we've entered the code, uh, we've generated the embed code. Now we're gonna embed that code on the, uh, on the page. We're gonna copy this, go back to my page. And uh, I'm going to put this embed code in the section where I want the interface uh, to be located. So here on this page is just below the title um, and all of that code uh, gets inserted. I'm going to save this. Let's go back to our interface and refresh this. And you can see now that th there is a search interface embedded. It's, uh, it's fully functional. And if we've done things correctly, we actually should uh, be tracking data. So uh, we've embedded the code and we're gonna verify the, the data collection. The, the first place to probably go actually is, is right to uh, analytics. And if you go into uh, re reports and you go into real-time reports, um, you can actually see that we've started collecting data. Um, so here um, are the search results coming in um, along with other events uh, that are being recorded. And if I click on these events, I can actually also see the, param the individual parameters uh, that are coming in for, for all of those, uh, those data elements. So that is one way uh, to verify that, that data is flowing correctly. Um, where am I going? Uh, another way is, is to look in the developer console. So if I go back to uh, my interface and I do uh, F12, oops, F12, open up like that. go open up my um, developer console, go to uh, network. Um, notice I've got uh, collect filtered. If you enter collect filtered and you click on an action, you actually start to see, and this action I'm clicking on on the left-hand side is, is selecting a card, which opens up the pop up in the in the map, but you can see that data is is coming in. And if I click on <clears throat> uh, that individual item, I can actually see 
uh, what's coming in uh, by way of the payload. So this is another way to see uh, the parameters that are being passed in uh, for each of these, these events. Um, also, obviously, a way to verify uh, that we've collected the, the, the data. Um, you can also go to um, the console itself. And if I close this out um, and I look for my data layer, um, you can actually see uh, that, that arguments are also coming in through the, the data layer. Um, I can open these up and see the, the data that, that's coming in uh, for each of these, uh, these events. So that's the second way to verify that uh, you're collecting data correctly. And then the third way is, is using the debug mode. Uh, so the debug mode requires that you make a slight change to um, and it requires a slight change to the uh, code itself. And uh, let's see. What we want to add is uh, is the debug, debug mode to the G tag uh, event. Which is here. So where you see gtag config, we've got the ID. Um, we want to insert uh, this control. We need a comma after this. And then you can insert the debug. And if I save this, we're actually sending data in, in debug mode. To get to the debug mode, uh, you go into admin. Um, down here under data display, you see the debug view. Um, and uh, this will actually start to list out events that are happening um, in a time sequence. So you can actually see this. Um, so if we go back to our demo, let's close out the console. Let's do another uh, search. And we can start uh, you know, seeing some actions. And uh, this data should start to show up in the, uh, the debug mode. Now there's oftentimes we've noticed a delay. Um, so you sometimes have to wait for that uh, debug data to show, um, which actually is also the same with the real time uh, reports. Um, so if we give this a few minutes, you should start seeing uh, you should start seeing data in the debug mode. Unless I've done something incorrect. Debug mode might be this true. That looks correct. That looks correct, right, Alejandro? Uh, yes. Uh, did you refresh the page, the host page? The, the whole page? Uh, yes. You need to refresh the whole page to configure again with the book mode. Got it. Let's see. All right, there we go. So you can start seeing data in the uh, the page view. So any questions at, at this point? I, I know that uh, you guys can't speak out loud, um, but feel free to post a question uh, on that. You may also uh, raise your hand and I can allow you to talk. So it's fine to do that as well. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so we've gone through that process and it, and it worked because I rehearsed it a bunch of times, of course. Like I said at the beginning of the uh, the session, um, it's it's not difficult. It is a little bit tricky. Um, so oftentimes you're going to run into, you know, just 
uh, a typo or something that that's a problem. And so um, Alejandro, who um, obviously knows uh, a lot about the implementation um, and has done a lot of troubleshooting, you know, Alejandro, can you speak a little bit to steps that uh, a user would take um, if they weren't getting the results and they want to start doing some troubleshooting? Uh, that's true. Uh, well, uh, the first step that we usually do when we have a problems and the locator is not recording is verify that you GA call is the same between the host page and the locator. You can see it in the view page source. That is the easiest way to do it. And you can confirm like the G tag or Google Tag Manager script is referring to that call. And also the bull size script has the same call. That is the first uh, step to see if you configure Google, your, your environment. And uh, next step, uh, you need to, uh, you can verify if you are getting this collect event. The collect event is the event that you that Joshua showed you in the network. When you enter the network tab, uh, every time that you load the page or you click in some part of the locator, you should see the collect event. So, so normally, Alejandro, this, you won't see this, right? You'll see all the events. Ah, uh, yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, you can filter the, the events because in this case, it's a simple page that the HTML is very little, but you could have a WordPress or another CMS. And this CMS, uh, usually have a lot of code and the network is a big list of, of events that you maybe don't, don't, don't see the, the collect. In the collect, uh, you can make sure that the tag is the same at the beginning. Uh, you can see that the tag match the host and the one that you configure the locator. And uh, this is all Google uh, variables that they use to track some other stuff. But at the end, you will see the payload that you are sending to the to the tag. Uh, Google usually groups in one payload all the, the information. But in this case, because the, we are seeing only one event, you can see it down. Uh, that you, the name of, of the event, that is uh, select location, and you can see what information uh, are you sending, like the bull size demo, uh, the home depot, uh, all that are parameters, custom parameters that bull size is sending back to Google to, to track down. Uh, regularly at the end, you can verify that to see if the if the data is coming through Google Analytics. Uh, another way to to do some debugging or something to see what are you doing is in the console, the the data layer, and you can erase the console and press a uh, start typing in the blank space data layer and the data layer contains all the events it's, it's an array that contains all the events since you configure the the tag uh, and you see all the events the custom events that we have and also the google events like page pads page view uh, all that events are from Google, but in here you can review. And definitely, if you have the da data layer, data layer, and the collect, you are good. If you don't have any of this step, uh, another thing that you can do is open the locator like standalone and see if the locator standalone uh, has the, the event track. So there are a couple ways to uh, view the standard, the, the standalone 
Uh, one is this view tab um, from the interface. You also have the ability to view the interface uh, from the upper left-hand uh, side of the, the console. So if you click view here, what you get is the interface um, without the host page. It's just the, the interface. That's what Alejandro is calling the standalone. And and so here you you're suggesting that you view the source. Is that right? Uh, is it, uh, no, the source no. Uh, you can see the developer console, and you can see that the in the network you are calling the the collect events. So same same strategy. <laughs> but just removing the uh, removing the host page, mm -hmm. and it's and... Uh, uh -huh. it's, it's, it's to verify because sometimes in some CMS, uh, you you can accidentally uh, install several plugins that inject Google Analytics call or Google Tag, and suddenly you will have three or four uh, calls in the same page, in the host page. And that will go, uh, cause uh, conflicts between the, the tracking. Then if you want to be sure that the locator alone is, is working, this is a way that you can do it. Yeah, and, and that's a, an excellent point and worth reinforcing, right? Is that uh, uh, oftentimes, whether it's through a plugin or even somebody adding their own scripts, right? You might cause conflicts um, that, that would uh, prevent the, the tracking to work correctly. Exactly. That is very common that uh, so some CMS like WordPress uh, inject uh, plugins that uh, mess up a little with the tracking because they inject uh, two times or three times different code or the same time. Uh, then that will cause that you see duplicate events in your locator or something similar. Right, right. What would you say is the the number one uh, uh, cause of of uh, problems that that you've seen? Uh, regularly the configuration. The configuration. <laughs> yes, maybe the uh, something that maybe we should remark is that you have uh, should have the Google uh, Analytics or the Google Tag Manager in your host page. That is very important because. Uh, sometimes uh, so, some some clients configure everything correct in both sense, but in the host page you don't have the the Google Tab Manager, and because this new architecture that you are sending back to the parent the, the event, definitely you need that to to work with Google Analytics for security reasons. Yeah, Great. maybe okay. that is the first <laughs> issue. Yeah. All right, thanks for that. <laughs> um, so, so let's move on and let's talk a little bit about the uh, reports. Um, so, I, I want to start and go back to uh, the uh, Google Analytics console. Uh, we've seen the the real time data uh, that that's coming in. Um, data takes uh, twenty four hours for it to get to. Uh, the the real sort of reporting section of uh, Google Analytics. So be m mindful of the fact that you know when you set it up on day one, you'll see uh, events in the real time reports, but you won't see events in in any of your other reports. But once you have, um, you've got the ability to um, see the number of uh, of times that each of these events has has triggered within uh, the date range of the report that that you're looking at. So here you can see. You know, we've been collecting data for a couple of days now on this the search result. This is the number of uh, of of times you get a result back in the the search, uh, the page views, locator search events, etc. Um, <clears throat> when you start to want to look at uh, at the uh, dimensions, um, which are uh, synonymous with uh, parameters, so we talk about you know collecting parameters. Uh, for each event, those parameters then can flow into uh, dimensions that that you have access to um, in the reports. So in this particular uh, configuration, 
I configured a dimension and uh, I'll show you how to do that, but I configured a dimension uh, for the location ID as well as the location name, which means that if I add this dimension to this report, it's gonna refresh and it's going to actually show me um, for each of these uh, events, um, how many times uh, the location was brought back in, uh, in this case, the, the search results. Um, if we keep uh, sort of scrolling down through this, we can see you know, how many times uh, the directions were clicked for this particular location, how many times the open lead form was collected. And as I mentioned, we're collecting uh, a lot of data, everything from uh, you know, who's clicked on the directions, who's clicked on by email, more information. If you're using the lead management, we are also tracking the opens of the form, the start of that form, the, the submission of that form, and all of that data can then be available for you to start to use for analysis purposes. What's important though, is realizing that in order to uh, bring that data in, uh, you actually have to go in and you have to uh, create a, a custom uh, a custom dimension. So you go to, again, admin, you go under data display, you go under custom definitions. And here you can see the, the two uh, dimensions that I've added. You can see that they're associated with the property or parameter. So if I wanted to add another one, you could just go in and, and call that, um, what's, what's another good uh, parameter, Alejandro? But open lead form. Uh, open lead form. All right. Um, so we're going to go in and we're going to select that it's an event. And then we're going to find that parameter. Um, uh, sorry, no. The open lead is uh, the, oh, sorry. the event. Well, that's sorry. the event. It's not the parameter. Sorry. Uh, some other parameter could be the. Mm -hmm. um, let me check uh, the type of search search type to see how many uh, automatic search or and how many manual search uh, you can do. Yep, that's a great one. Um, so this will be a, a, a parameter that dimensionalizes that. Uh, we're going to save that and now. Go back to reports. Um, unfortunately, that data won't be available until tomorrow because even though you imagine that it's being collected, um, you haven't told uh, uh, your GA account to start um, including that data. So right now, it's not available as a uh, as a custom. No, it actually is. You There's can add, add it here, but there won't be any data associated with that. But that's that's the sort of uh, jumping off point for beginning to use all the parameters as dimensions and and starting to uh, um, collect uh, collect data and use data. Um, so Ben, can you talk a little bit to you know, some of the other types of reports and uh, things that users would look to be able to do? We actually had a question. Uh, someone's hand was raised, uh, although we may have lost that. Well, I see it. It's in the Q and A, Tom. Oh, okay. The the uh, the answer, Todd, is yes. You'll see. You saw when um, maybe when Joshua was doing that that one of the custom parameters was the location ID. Um, that's going to be unique to each one. So uh, even though we're currently not passing that additional. Um, parameter of the, you know, the city and state, you could take the location ID and cross-reference it to an export of your data and get that, get that information. It might require a little bit of um, additional uh, cross-referencing, but that's how I would go about getting that. Does that help? Great. So I'll just talk real quickly to um, uh, to to this slide right here. We're we're running a little bit short on time, and I know we need, still need to talk about uh, Google Tag Manager. So I won't go into a great detail, and this is why we we didn't go into great detail because obviously this is a really deep 
well that we could uh, that we could get into. Um, but I wanted to talk briefly about what kind of reports um, you might want to start with. You know, you see all this all this possible reporting. It's a it's a huge opportunity, um, but it can be overwhelming. And and the, and I found uh, when I started with this, uh, you know, a couple of years ago that. It's hard to figure out where to start. What what would I start with? And this is this list is really sort of a a list that I've used with many of our clients as just a way to start to get a picture of what's going on with your locator um, using Google Analytics. So I just want to talk through these very briefly. Won't go into detail on exactly how to set them up and and uh, and that yet. Yeah, maybe that can be a follow up. Uh, uh, webinar or uh, or some content that we'll put together, but some ideas for you. I would start with these um, basic reports. Uh, I want to look at two things: locator itself, which should apply to everyone, and if you're also using local pages, we want to consider the local pages as well. Um, looking at the locator, first basic number I want to see is page views on the locator on the the page that's hosting it. That gives us sort of a baseline number. How many times are people hitting that page? The next element that I want to look at is search events. Compare it to your page views um, to see if that number is significantly higher or not. Because one thing that, that can happen is that uh, people come to the page. Generally, if you have auto search turned on, they hit the page, it's going to do a search. And at that point, so far, you'll have a one-to-one -one correspondence between page views and search events because you get one search every time the page loads. But then if people are changing their parameters, they're changing the radius, they're searching a different city, they're doing something else, the number of manual searches may start to increase. So what we wanna do is we wanna compare um, page views versus auto searches versus manual search to start to get an idea what people are doing on that. And then if you do see a discrepancy, if you see a lot of people doing a lot of manual searches, maybe you wanna, dive into that and figure out what the reasons are behind that. The next thing that I want to look at are the call to action events on the locator page, because this is really what the locator is all about, right? You want people to find locations and do something with it. So the calls to action include this whole list of, of things. All of them are events that are that are that uh, that can be tracked. Clicking on the more info, which launches the local page. Click on the phone number if you have the view phone uh, trackable uh, uh, action configured that, that reveals the, the number. So you're, you're, what you're doing is you're seeing user engagement because they want to get the phone number. So they want to do that. If they're on mobile, they can click the phone link or if they have a, a phone app connected to their, their desktop, which is probably more rare. Clicking the contact link if you have that directions, which takes them uh, over to Google Maps. Um, clicking on a website if you have that instead of the more info. Um, those are all important uh, user engagement metrics. I like to put those all on a single report with a with a uh, like a line chart over time. Um, see if they're increasing. See if there are things that I can do. One of the interesting things is that you find with Bullseye's ability to rename uh, either through advanced styles or in some cases with labels to rename items. If you have something like uh, more info on your on your lead form on your uh, sorry your your local page versus uh, view dealer profile or uh, get more details or something like that, you'll find that the language on the button or the styling of the button can affect how many people are clicking on it. So this is really valuable for that. And of course, the the, uh, the the big money that we're looking for most of the time, if we're using Bullseye and Bullseye Lead Management, is what people are doing with the lead form. And again, how you present that can make a big difference. So we want to count and compare how many people are opening the lead form from the locator, how many people are closing it without doing anything, and how many people are submitting it. Um, obviously, you want to see the ratio um, lean more towards submit once they open it. Uh, for, first of all, you want to get more people to open it. Then you want more people to submit it rather than just close it. If they're closing it without submitting it, you want to start to delve into that and find out why. I see there's a question. I'm going to take a quick look. Oh, I think that's left over from before. Sorry. So, so that's so, on the. I'm sorry. Then that's okay. So I know we want to get to the the tag manager stuff. Um, it, it, you know, as we talked about earlier, uh, before this this uh, presentation, we'd like to do a, a full demo, right, on reports or a full webinar. 
Yeah. Um, and if that's something that people would be interested in, um, uh, let us know. Um, probably either way we'll do it. But um, there's, as you know, as you can tell from uh, Ben sort of going into this, there's there's so much uh, that that you can look at and so much value. Um, and uh, and why don't we why don't we uh, just kind of move on to the next slide if you don't mind? Sure. Yeah, that's fine. Can I just add one more? key comment yeah absolutely on, on the local pages obviously all this stuff below the local page call to action is the same thing but in this case because one of the main benefits of local pages is trying to capture uh local google traffic google search uh for S, you know an seo benefit looking at source is a is a key report that you want there you want to see which ones are coming from your locator which is less interesting than the ones that are coming from organic local Google search. So I would include that in a, in a baseline report. Great. Thank you, Ben. Sure. Um, okay. So um, we talked about uh, uh, scripts and plugins, just something to be aware of. Um, so let's talk about uh, uh, Google Tag Manager. As I mentioned at the beginning of the conversation, uh, the steps are, are pretty much exactly the same. Uh, with with two minor exceptions. Uh, one is that there's a, a tag template that you can use to import into the tag manager. And then once you've imported that tag template, uh, you just need to go and update the uh, GA4 measure ID with that, that tag. So <clears throat> let's go and look at um, the tag manager. Um, <clears throat> the... Uh, you have right now what we're looking at is uh, we're looking at a, a workspace that has actually no tags in it. Um, so you can get the uh, the JSON that has the template from uh, the knowledge base. Um, and if you go here, you can see there's a link to that uh, template. I've already downloaded it. Um, to import the template, you want to go to admin. Um, you want to go to import container. Um, I'm going to select that on my uh, laptop. I'm going to use an existing workspace, which is this new one I've created. You can see it's going to tell me that we're going to import uh, 23 tags, 24 triggers, 24 variables. So I'll just uh, confirm this. And, uh, and it's actually gone in and imported all of those. Now, this is working in a, a, a separate workspace, so it's not uh, presently live. The default space is live. So I can actually go in and sort of make changes here. Um, <clears throat> one thing that, that is important to note is that actually on each of these tags, you can go in, you can see what the event name is, and you can also find those event parameters. So this is another way to see um, all the parameters based on, on the events. <clears throat> um, once you've imported that, you want to make sure that you add, um, if you don't already have the Google Tag Manager, um, actually, let me back up a second. So the, the second step is to update the variable uh, with the correct uh, uh, G, G tag. So here is a, uh, is a variable uh, called GA4 measure ID. Um, you can see this has been set to a default value. This is what you want to make sure gets configured with uh, that G tag that is part of your data stream. So this G tag, we wanna go in and we wanna make sure that we've added that here um, and we've saved that. Um, and then you wanna make sure that that uh, tag, this whole G tag gets added to your host page um, if it's not already. You can click on this to get instructions. Um, there are two components to this. One is pasting the code um, high in the head of the page as high as possible, and then pasting a piece of code in the body tag. Um, you want to uh, get this GTM code uh, next, and you want to go back to the interface. And in place of the GA code, Um, you would you would put the, uh, the GTM code, and you would uh, save this.
go to your publish tab. Um, and here you can view and confirm that now you have the GTM tag instead of the G tag. This needs to be copy and pasted and placed into uh, the, the page. Um, I believe that my index two example, you know, has the, the you can see the script here. Um, so here's the tag manager script um, with the GTM code. Um, you have the second uh, Google tag uh, script here. Um, and then you have uh, the bullseye uh, script uh, along with that tag code uh, that's listed here. Um, and if I were to uh, save this and, and publish this, um, you would you would basically now have data flowing through the tag manager into uh, Google Analytics and all of the validation steps, checking on the console, uh, I'm sorry, checking on the real-time reports, uh, checking in the console, looking under the network tab, looking under uh, the, uh, the console tab, um, all of that then would start to be showing data that's, that's flowing through that uh, Google Tag Manager instead of directly. <clears throat> um, so that is Google Tag Manager. Sorry that we've run over a little bit, um, but this has been, uh, been a lot of fun. Um, I hope everybody got a lot out of it. Um, are there more questions? Yes, Todd has a question about Adobe. Adobe Tags. Um, we we have had clients that ha are using Adobe Tags. I can't say that uh, we have a lot of experience uh, with it directly, uh, but I think that uh, to your point, Todd, it it should work in a very similar kind of way. Thank you very much, Todd. So we, uh, we'll save this um, and we'll share it with everybody. Um, thank you for your time and uh, look forward to the next webinar. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Have a great Bye. weekend.